So this the Palm Avenue project is on a long narrow site which is oriented uh, like such almost along the cardinal axis and this would be the east that would be the west this would be the south so that's your sun path uh, what we've done is we placed a long narrow building block which is the main house uh, we have a separate section for staff with a staff block and a vehicular entrance and a service entrance but your main access is right here off the street where you're on a corner so those are your neighbors and you have a surrounding green piece of land We have here is one olive tree which sort of is the beacon to the house and you have a series of poplars around here and then there are a few palms. you have further is a stairwell which becomes a beacon and we have the main skylight that's all that there is to it in addition we have a series of green hedges so you enter from the street onto a, a little space where you can alight now that's your street and that's your vehicles and staff as you enter you and you are greeted by a you know a, an element of the entrance what we have is is space for the family here which looks out to a neighboring plot and some greens, but has a double height space and a beautiful skylight. Here, as you enter, is the formal living space, which is about eight meters by eight meters and eight meters tall, with a sculptural spiral that takes you uh, through three levels formal dining upstairs a den downstairs and the formal living area which is overlooking the olive tree and overlooking bogen villa here um, so the the living space which is the bedrooms etc are all sp spilling out and sort of opening into one space that allows the formal area to be contained and well the guest areas to be contained and family living space sort of spills out into one that's on the ground floor well upstairs you have a double height space so you'll see the ceiling continues all the way um, so the, you can actually experience, you can see the expanse of the house from the double light space and you have the formal dining right here. Which then again connects with that, with the, with the formal living space downstairs, but you can still see the family space from the formal dining space. So there is some acoustic connection. There is a guest bedroom uh, and uh, a, a second bedroom upstairs with a little terrace which is overlooking green and overlooking the street on the other side so there's the house pulls back and there is some sense of privacy um, as you go along this is a straight flight of steps that leads and connects to the two or three spaces odd and the formal dining area as you can see is just a 
a very very long table with you know eclectic uh, sort of uh, collection of furniture pieces that we uh, that were prototypes that were done for some of our projects and some iconic pieces that were made for celebrated architects in the past um, a little bar and a sort of uh, you know like an open uh, an open kitchen right there and a small little lounge which overlooks the formal uh, dining area as you enter you alight at the uh, off the street straight into the house uh, while well, there is a terrace and a balcony that gives you this you know uh, an angle of repose um, what we've done is we haven't taken the parapets very high but we've uh, we've ke we've kept the parapets low but we sort of set them back with a glazed handrail so there is you know it is there is an unobstructed view but there is a sense of privacy and the house also sort of tends to lighten up as you go along uh, as you come up you will see that there is a uh, there is a there is a stairwell which is sort of marked black in the model but it's actually reflective and there is one skylight which goes straight down into the uh, uh, into the into the family space what we have uh, is planned for a pool at the back and the staff area has its own set of access for everything including uh, electromechanical services and a restricted staff access so we have a, a couple of terraces which are basically spillouts that's one two here and a third one there this becomes a sort of aberration in the composition we've also got a few um, you know uh, uh, rainwater down takes which are in stainless steel and a sort of celebration of landscape of course everything finally overlooks and focuses uh, the formal spaces focus on to a, a an olive tree that's right here um, in the landscape an important part of your material strategy of our material strategy is to minimize waste and optimize uh, you know consumption in the making of a project so for this one we have kept our material palette fairly simple organic and uh, and limited um, so what we have is a lot of white paint a certain amount of uh, oak wood uh, a quartzite stone uh, kadappa stone and uh, two or three different textures and colors in fabric This house has a ventilated elevation which is made of uh, which from the outside in is a series of interlocking timber panels which are thermal treated uh, so they don't age very quickly uh, mounted on an aluminum and steel framework which uh, then has um, a waterproofing membrane and a thermal insulation membrane and an air cavity through which we sometimes run a few uh, service lines our elevation is made with uh, thermal treated pine and these are interlocking panels that are then mounted on a uh, a cladding framework but as they lock they resist water ingress and um, form the first uh, wear layer of our of our um, of our ventilated facade Okay.